Assalamualaikum and welcome back to the latest episode of Barbell Junction. Uh, before we start, uh, please be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, press the like button if you like or you don't like the video. Uh, leave your comments uh, if you can. Uh, ask us any question or any if you have any suggestions on uh, who to bring on to the podcast. And we also, we are available uh, on Spotify, so check us out there as well. All right, today we have Iqbal on the show. And uh, Iqbal is a powerlifter. And today we're going to speak about the um, competitive powerlifting, powerlifter mindset. Right? Yes, es- yes. Especially uh, going through injuries. Correct, correct. Yeah? So, yeah. so, okay, before me, we move on... Um, Iqbal, can you just in, uh, introduce yourself? All right, everyone, for uh, people that don't know me, my name is Iqbal. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank Azmir for having me on the podcast. Welcome, bro. This, this is my first time doing something like this, so mm-hmm. if I look awkward on the camera or if I don't sound right, mm-hmm. I apologize for that beforehand. But uh, a bit about myself, at least about my training history, I think that's what people want to know about. Right. Uh, I've always been into athletics, ever since I was young. However, if we're talking about um, competitively, what sort of sports I've played, uh, I was in soccer. After that, I was in track and field. I Mm. did 100 meter and 200 meter. After that, I was even into uh, breaking or break dancing, b-boying. It depends on uh, who you ask, the name. um, It can be any one of those. Mm. And then I got into powerlifting. And with all these sports, I was playing it at a competitive level, which means I was on the school teams. I was traveling and, you know, we... For (laughs) breakdancing? For breakdancing, yes, not traveling, but I did do tournaments. For... uh, Yes, yes. uh, Under the school? No, not under the school. This was an independent school. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Mm. yeah. But uh, for soccer, for track, it would have been under the school, yeah. How far did yeah. you go for track and soccer? Like state uh, or? For soccer was more just um, when I was in middle school. Mm. So um, I always went to international schools growing up okay. because of my lifestyle. So for me, when I say middle school, I mean year six to year eight. Mm-hmm. Year seven would be considered a uh, form right. one. Okay. Form one, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So for that, it was more just with the school team. Mm. Uh, back then, I was based in Vienna, Austria. And okay. yes, yes, we, we mm. traveled to Budapest, we traveled mm. to Germany, and went to Frankfurt okay. to play soccer with my team as well. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm interested <laughs> to find out a little bit about more about your backstory. Yeah, like, sure, sure. So, you're, I'm assuming your dad is uh, some kind of diplomat or something? or Yes, yes. He yes. was? Oh, okay. Yes. He, he still is, still still working. Still okay. working, yeah. So, your whole childhood, uh, w- was it all overseas or uh, I did, did you have some schooling in, in Malaysia? I did do some schooling here in Malaysia as okay. well. But I was all around the world. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. you finished high school overseas? Yes. Yes. Mm. So actually, it was in high school that um, I did track and field. Mm. So around year nine until I, I graduated, okay. which was in Doha, Qatar. Okay. Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. So how many languages yeah. do you speak? No, no, just just English. Just English. Just English. Man. Malay. <laughs> <laughs> man, I mean, good enough. Good okay, enough. Good enough. To good understand, enough. Right. Good okay. enough. Yeah. <laughs> just in case I transition into yeah. Malay suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, uh, there you, uh, 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 what do you call this? Um, you were doing track and field and also soccer. Were, were you even though you were competitive and, and competing yep. for your school, were you um, any good? Or, or what, what was the reason that you didn't continue uh, doing those sports? Ah, all right, all right, yeah. Um, actually, with soccer, to be honest, I just got a bit bored. Okay, I wanted to try something new because I was playing soccer since. Since I was a kid, since right. I was six, seven, right. eight, always playing soccer, right? Yeah. So, track, track, right, right, hundred meter, two hundred meter. I was never very good mm. at it. I wasn't considered like the top. Mm. I was good enough to make the team, and I was good enough to go for the like what we call like a regional track meets. Really? What was your hundred yes. meter? Yes, 
Uh, my 100 meter at the time was 11.32. That okay. was my best clocked in competition. At probably, what, 16? I was 17, 17 at the time, yeah. 11.32. That's, that's pretty fast, right? Yes, but however, the ones that were getting first, mm. first place, they were 10, 10, 10. Like mm. flat. 10 flat, yeah. But at the time, from what I remember, no one broke 10. There was no nines. Yeah. At the time, yeah, because I that would have been probably around two thousand eight, two thousand nine, mm. during that time, yeah. So yeah. then you um, after high school, base obviously you continued to your tertiary education. Yes, yes. Right. So and that was in Australia. You mentioned before. Yes, yes, I've mentioned to you before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So how many years did you spend in Australia, and and were you active when you were in the college? So when I went. In to Australia for studies. I was there for about uh, four years mm-hmm. doing my degree. Degree, yep. Uh, Bachelor of Science. Mm-hmm. I was active well, only... Tell people what you graduated in, man. Uh, I graduated... Okay, so I did a Bachelor of Science. I have a double major, actually, in chemistry and psychology. Oh, my. Yes, yeah. yeah you're going <laughs> to psychoanalyze me. <laughs> Psych... Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, you didn't tell me that just now. Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah. I didn't have That's to interesting. Tell, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so, but during my time in Australia was when I sort of transitioned from, I was still doing some break dancing mm. at the time. Oh yeah, break dancing. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when did you start break dancing? Break in, dancing? In, in between uh, your sprints or what? Uh, actually, it was um, during high school as well. Okay. Where I got into that. I had a friend, a Korean friend, mm. and he was into this stuff. Mm. I was, well, that looked cool, right? Right. Uh, I want to uh, try, uh, right? Mm, I want to try, yeah, right? Mm. Yeah, so basically throughout high school, I was sort of uh, balancing those two because even with track, you have like a, in sports, actually anyone that's been part of athletics before, they know there's like a in-season and an off-season, okay. mm-hmm. right? You're not on the go the whole time. There'll right. be times when you actually have track meets mm-hmm. and then the season's over. Okay. So you have the rest of the other seasons to basically just do, do what anything. you want, try, try and the sport. So for me, during the off-season, I was... I was break dancing, yeah. yeah. How, how big were you? Because usually track and field athletes, mm. they're pretty muscular. And how, mm. how I mean... I, I, wasn't, I wasn't as muscular as the other kids back then. Okay. I, was a bit, I was a bit on the skinnier side, okay. to be honest. Yeah. So right now, I'm weighing about 77 kilos. Okay. Back then, I was probably 72, 73. Still big, bro. That's just 5 kg difference. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and I haven't grown taller or anything. So, yeah. Right. yeah. So it didn't hinder your break dancing moves because you were. Oh, slowly it did. Slowly yeah. it did because eventually, when I was at uni, mm-hmm. I completely stopped athletics and I was just in the gym. Okay. Yeah. Just doing yeah. like I assume like most people bodybuilding. Yes. Yes. Stuff, correct. Right? Correct. Just doing what I want, yeah. which was uh, for most of me and my uni friends back then was just we did chest and arms a lot. Right. Yeah, legs maybe once mm. a week. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did that comeback yeah, to bite yeah. you now. Yeah. Doing not doing all the squats. Uh well now I have to play catch up. Yeah. Right. Right. Play right. catch up. Yeah. So you just yeah. g- give up on breakdancing and uh, athletics. Uh, yes, basically when I went to uni, um, I didn't really join any sports. I was focusing on my studies. But I still mm. wanted to keep fit. Right. I still wanted to continue actually uh, break dancing, but mm. I wasn't able to find a community okay. there to really do it with, to practice with. So my motivation wasn't really there. Yeah, but break dancing mm. is stuck in the 80s, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's still around, man. It's still around. You just, just got to look for it. You just yeah. got to look for it. Yeah. But so, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, like, I remember when I was growing up, uh, we had this place near my house, um, uh, and people just. That they did, uh, those times you have a boom box, right? Yes, yes. And right. the cardboard box. Yeah. Right, yeah. And all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and people just break dancing. Um, but that's as, as far as my memory uh, serves me. Uh, but yeah, it was like back in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Right? but to be honest, um, I don't know how the scene is now because I stopped around 2011, 2012. I was quite active following the scene up till then but I don't know how it is now and you honest, competed yeah. as well right? We, yes basically now and then actually most of the competitions were done locally or by back then I competed in a competition held by Red Bull mm. actually Red Bull? yes yes because Red Bull 
at the time, at least back in the Middle East, uh -huh. even in the US and stuff, Red Bull is involved with a lot of the extreme sports. Um, extreme uh, skateboarding, yeah, yeah, yeah. weightboarding, yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. break dancing was, was one of them extreme as well. Extreme sport? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what you'd classify it as, but That's they were, or should we say niche, yeah, niche, yeah, sort yeah. of the niche mm. sort of sports, yeah. yeah. Okay, then, mm. uh, so in, 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 uh, during college, you, you just went to the gym, uh, but you, you weren't introduced to powerlifting yet? Or? No, not yet. Not All right, yet. so when, when did you discover powerlifting? Basically, um, right when I came back to here, mm. back to KL, mm. basically when I finished my degree, I mean, some things didn't work out there. I was right. trying mm. to look for a job mm. full time, but I came back here mm -hmm. and basically, before I came back, I was already looking into strength training. Mm -hmm. As with most people that go into powerlifting, you know, we most people say they want to find like a objective way to to measure okay. their strength or to measure mm -hmm. their progress. Mm -hmm. While with bodybuilding, it might be a bit more subjective. It's up to you, right? Yeah, Just, how you yeah, look. How you look, yeah, yeah, yeah how you look. Mm. I mean, you can still chase strength as a bodybuilder. I mean, there's some very strong bodybuilders mm. that do moving very heavy weight. Mm -hmm. But for me, I wanted something that could keep me, how do you say, keep me on track. Mm -hmm. So like I know, oh, so my strength is at this level now. Right. Six months later, it's here. Six months later, it's there. Mm. So then I was slowly researching into powerlifting. Mm -hmm. Slowly started doing that sort of uh, strength training. And then when I came here, uh, first gym I went to was uh, back then it was called QLS yeah, right. Fitness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called mm -hmm. Hale mm -hmm. Athletics mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but uh, that was the first gym, and I got into powerlifting then. Yeah. What year was this? Was that what? What year? That was about four years ago. Okay, about twenty fifteen. Yeah, twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen, right? Yeah. Because four, I, four and a half. Four, four and a half. Yeah, yeah because yeah. I remember the first mm. MPA was in twenty fifteen. That's when I started my business. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's around there. Okay. Yes. Yes. So uh, to talk talk through uh, talk to me through talk through the how you got into powerlifting uh, proper. How I got into yeah. it proper. Okay. Yeah. So first. So so you said yeah. you 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 went to uh, QLS or Hale, um, and then did you get any coach or mm, you mm. know? Yeah. So first. Um, what I did was just, I was doing my own strength training just mm. through research, just like with everyone, you know, yeah, you see the, yep. the starting strength mm. and uh, five by five strong mm. lifts, all the things you can find online very, right. very easily accessible. Uh, when I first joined, yeah, I was, um, I got a coach under uh, QLS. I, I did that for a few months, uh, made, made good gains as well. Mm -hmm. But after that, uh, I decided to prep for my first meet uh, on my own. Mm -hmm. So I was probably doing powerlifting for about six to seven months so before I joined my first comp, which was, it was held in, in Make Space, okay. which is in Quill, Quill City, Quill City okay. Mall. Yeah. That's probably the yeah. second or third uh, yeah. one that MPA. Yes, right? correct, correct. Mm. One of the very first, first, first mm. yeah, mm -hmm. one of the very first, yeah. So that was my first competition. So that's how I got into it. And once I did that first one, just I just wanted more, yeah. What were your numbers yeah. uh, for the competition? Yeah, so my first meet, I totaled 575 kilos at 75. I squatted 192.5, I benched 140, and I deadlifted uh, 242.5. Yeah. Uh, did you win? Uh, I was... Like uh, <laughs> a, sounds like... Uh, I actually, I, I came in second. So this is my first comp. I came in second. I lost to a Filipino lifter. Okay. Actually, that came by. Uh, his mm. name's Chester, so we we still keep in touch okay. now and then. Yeah. Are you much stronger yeah. than Chester now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, he went up a weight class. Okay. So uh, he's he's tad stronger now. He's a tad okay. stronger. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's pretty cool, yeah. right? I mean, like you first competition, second place. How many competitors um, in um, your weight class? The usual. I mean, seventy-five has always been quite a packed yeah. weight class to be honest i don't remember but most likely around 15 really probably uh, that's, that's yeah. very good yeah usually 75 kilo weight class you'll get 15 to right. 20 people each time yeah so after that did yeah. you compete in any other uh, mpa or yeah after MPA? that i basically did one every year 
Okay. I wanted to do more, but then um, basically not too long after the first meet, I got I got injured. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. happened? Yeah. Basically, um, the usual beginner mistake, or we say a rookie mistake, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You get that first bite mm. of the meat, right? Yeah. The cherry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pop the cherry, right? Mm, yeah. That's what they say, right? Mm-hmm. And basically, because you notice that when you first start. Your progress is very fast. Okay. Yep. Very quick. Very rapid. Especially if um, you just let's say genetically predisposed to strength training, like mm. gives you a good stimulus to improve. You're gonna just keep improving, improving. And actually, that was how it was for me. Mm. Like um, I was when I went before going into powerlifting, my bench was at one ten. Oh. And I just did like six months of powerlifting training, just bumped up to 140, which I hit during my first meet. Okay. I was squatting like 140 for like two to three like high reps, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the quarter squatting. Right. And then I hit 192.5 mm. in my first powerlifting meet. Deadlifting, I didn't do much deadlifting at all. I was doing like convi. Mm-hmm. I was only able to convi like 170. Mm-hmm. So I switched to sumo, right, for mm-hmm. training powerlifting for mm-hmm. my first meet, and then I hit 242.5. So my what my my progress was very fast. So then how I I was doing my own programming mm. after the meet. So how I structured my training back then, how I structured the numbers I wanted to hit was very um, to me at the time it seemed logical. Right. It was a very fast, very aggressive progression. What was it? What was the target? Um, okay, so I finished my first meet. So I wanted to do another one next year, mm-hmm. and basically I wanted to you know squat. 200 plus bench 150 plus you know deadlift is like I want deadlift 260 right that's that's like the next you know that's that was like the next step right for me right mm. and actually um during my second year of powerlifting my squat okay this is this is uh, people that followed me from the very beginning and now actually will know that my squat and deadlift has not increased much mm. in numbers mm. because of my you mean until now or? yeah the improvement yeah until okay. now yeah yeah right so during my second year Of uh, training powerlifting, I actually squatted in training two o seven point five. Okay, and I had already deadlifted two uh, fifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, basically my injury is my hip flexor. I have a mm-hmm. hip flexor impingement mm-hmm. on the right side. Right, and so I compensate. So I squat, sing it. Mm. Yeah, so it'll be a bit slanted, and then other. The, your body will start compensating in other right. ways. Mm-hmm. So if the right hip can't take the pressure, it will go a bit on the lower back. Okay. As well, that means the lower back on the left side will take the pressure, and then you come up with all these, these other issues. So basically, my first, so my second year was really just me back and forth, with my injury, like my my best, uh, squat and deadlift, which was done uh, last year, mm-hmm. is a two one two point five squat. And a two four five kilo deadlift. Okay. Yeah, which means like you see my first meet, like I mentioned, I deadlifted two four two point five. Right. Yeah, last year I only did two four five. Right. And my squat, even though I did two o seven point five in training during my second year, I only did two one two point five last year. Uh, so you're yeah. saying that you, you're saying that uh, you're still compensating for that hip impingement. Uh, at the moment now it's. Because I have the experience with handling it, so I know how to. I've changed. How I structure my training and how mm. I take my training, how I view it, so that's how I've been able to. So I've still, still progress, still progress from year to year. Yeah. yeah but um, how come you've never? I mean, do you ever went to the doctors or physio to get it fixed? Okay. Yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> so the first time I was injured, no, I tried to. B- before that, one. how yeah. did you get that injury? How? Yeah. Basically, just. Going hundred percent in the gym day in day out for months. I made rapid mm. progress, but then slowly my body because I didn't rest. Uh, yep. So basically, I was training okay. five times a week, and each time I was just all out. pushing it. Yeah, all out, just all out. And this yeah. is based on um, your own programming. Yes, yes, my own, my own. Okay. So I got injured on my on my right. own. So accord, it's your fault. Basically. It's like yes, no one else's fault. <laughs> It's my fault. It's my right. fault. Yeah, yeah. And and you you got the injury during what the the squats or the deadlift or uh squats 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 yeah. Isn't that always the case? That yeah. A lot of people get injury. Yeah. From yeah. that, you know, like Luke, when he I think was was he when he was deadlifting or, 
or squatting when he tore his uh, butt butt cheek? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure, man. But right. but basically, a lot of what I call like the OG guys, yeah. the ones that were lifting during the first, second mm. MPA, you mm. sort of see a lot of them get injured, and yeah. some don't come back. Some yeah. don't come back. Mm. Like okay. they're not not to sound rude, but they're not relevant in the powerlifting scene anymore. Right. You don't right. know who they are. Mm. You don't know who they are, and um, I think that's one of the things that at least younger lifters have to understand. You have to, you have to train in a way that you can still compete mm-hmm. next year, two years later, three years later, four years later. It depends how long yeah, you want do you, to do, do it. Do you, you know? think? Yeah. yeah. Here's a question that I I am interested to to uh, to understand and to know. Okay. Is that I've, um, do you think injury can be avoided? I feel very major injuries, like let's say the ones that set you back like half a year, one year. I feel those can be avoided, but the the wear and tear sort of injuries. Sometimes we pull a muscle, right? Sometimes our joints aren't going to feel very good. I feel that's unavoidable. Okay, that's unavoidable. Yeah. And and people just, I mean, uh, lifters just have to work around that. Yes, yes, correct. But usually when I talk, when I mention minor injuries, I don't consider that. Like how long were you out when you got when you got that injury? Okay, uh, okay, f- for the first six months. I couldn't even like squat or deadlift Ooh. properly. I was using an empty bar. I just start with an empty bar, and even with the empty bar, it was painful for okay. me to squat. Basically, you were doing just bench. And yes, yeah, correct. Because uh, bench is uh, fortunately or unfortunately, um, mm. I never got injured. Okay. Doing bench. So my bench from year to year has been improving. Yeah. Which actually brings me back to that point where if you can stay injury free, you'll keep making progress. Progress. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so six, uh, six months. Yes, six, six months. Yeah. And did you go to uh, any doctor or? At first, I was stubborn. I didn't. I it said, is oh, always man. the case, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. it is. It is. It yeah, is. is that I an ego thing, or is this like, uh, oh, I don't uh, have money to go see a doctor no, <laughs> or something no, 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 like no. that? <laughs> money is there. Money is there. Yeah. Money, my money was no, no problem. Okay, yeah. but um, basically, at the time, I think it's a bit of ego and maybe just. You thinking you know best, right? At least for me, at the time, I think it's with a lot of younger lifters. Mm. They just don't like to listen. Yeah, you can tell them X Y Z, but then it doesn't matter. They'll, they'll still do with it. with any young guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> not not just with lifting, yeah, yeah, right? Not yeah, just not just with lifting. lifting yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So uh, I was the same, but um, now I'm I'm much more. I take in what people have to say. I really mm. consider everything and just not acting as, so as dumb. Yeah. Did you eventually? Yes, eventually. Okay. Yes, that, that's how I found out. I had a. Uh, Hip impingement, Hip impingement and, and all this stuff and and <coughs> from there was how I structured my my rehab at the time. Yeah. Excuse me. <coughs> um, can can you explain a little bit about what a hip impingement in injury is? Okay, or can you can you just help us visualize? I mean, how to visualize? Okay, so all right, so the femur, right? So mm-hmm. your thigh bone, mm-hmm. that is what is uh, connected to the connected to the hip, right? Right. Okay. So an impingement is basically the easiest way to say is that. They're grinding against each other. You mean the bones? There's no space. There's no space. The bones, the, the pelvic bone and the femur. Um, I'm not sure if it's the bone. Uh, don't uh, quote me on yeah. this. But something there is. That's why they call it impingement because it pinches. Okay. So the oh. the femur and the part of the hip that connects. I'm not sure if it's the bone. Yeah. It could be what's in between as well. But okay. it's grinding against each other. Usually, normally there will be some space. Okay. Okay. Space for the for the joints. And the bone to move. And I'm assuming there's a pain receptor there that makes yes, it correct. painful. For correct. Correct. So when you hit a certain angle, so when you squat, right? You know your your knee has to come up, mm-hmm. right? Your hip has to flex. Right. So some people just have less space for it. That's why you also see variations in the squat. Some people can squat narrower. Some people can squat okay. wider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because of how the the how do you say physiolo- um, is it physiology the biology how the structure is yeah 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 I'm so bad with terms yeah yeah I forget them sometimes yeah. as well yeah and then you after after you've seen the doctor mm. uh, I'm assuming you went to uh, some form of therapy or s- yeah I started off with the chiro okay. at first yeah chiropractor so all that alignment. Mm. Sort of things and gave me some prehab, rehab exercises to mm-hmm. try, mm-hmm. 
along with uh, my training. And at the time, my training, like I mentioned, was just with the empty bar. Mm. Slowly, I started loading weight again, mm -hmm. just 40 kilos. Mm -hmm. Each week, just start with 40 kilos, go up 50 kilos, then 60 kilos. And I just see how my pain is. Okay. If the pain is, is there, it's like sharp, I pull back a bit or I'll stay at the same weight for another few weeks. Right. Until the pain was totally gone, then I keep going up. Yeah. But it's still yeah. there. Yeah, even now it's it's still here, it's still here. It's not like completely gone. And you can yeah. go for any surgery or corrective surgery. Um, you can, but uh, I don't want to. Okay. For me, um, actually, what I did was part of changing my training, right? So I went from squatting in heels to squatting in flats, and I went from squatting wider to squatting narrower. So these are some. So basically, when you get injured, right, mm -hmm. and you go back into training, you have to change certain variables of your training mm -hmm. this is what i find a lot of uh, younger lifters aren't doing so you get injured training a certain way you take one two months let's say to rehab mm -hmm. but then you go back when you go back into training you're doing the exact same training you're doing that got you injured in yeah, the first okay. place yeah they yeah, didn't change anything that, they didn't change yeah, anything that yeah. broke them <laughs> yes and the issue is and the reason they don't do it is because they say oh i'm weaker if I narrow my stance, let's say lah, if I narrow my stance and I go from flats to heels, I'm going to be weaker. But that's just adaptation, right? I mean... Yes, correct. But this is the... I'm just saying this was my mindset. I right. think it's a lot for the younger lifters as well. That's why they just go back into what they were doing before. Right. Just stubborn, yeah. Like for me, I was very weak with a flats and a narrow stance back at the time, so... Flats? F L A T S uh, flats. Flats, flat shoes. That means okay, yeah. you don't have uh, the heel, the heel yeah, elevation. Yeah. So when I first um, went into powerlifting, I squatted slightly wider, a wider stance, and I had the heel. I wore the Nike Romalios right. two, yeah. Which is on sale at Zilfit. Oh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, mm. yeah, can't, yeah, I yeah. can't help it. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. They're, they're good shoe. They're good shoe, by the way. Really, yeah. really, they're good shoe. Yeah. Um, very, very stable, right? In right. The squat mm -hmm. when you have mm -hmm. the heel on. Mm -hmm. So I squatted wider and with heels. So um, when it comes to like the hip impingement, right? Basically, every person there'll be a certain angle that at the bottom of the squat will irritate this mm -hmm. your joint, mm -hmm. that hip joint. Mm -hmm. So for me. When I switched to flats and I narrowed it, I found it didn't irritate. Mm. Like and, and you started yeah. building up from Yeah, from that's there. correct. But I was very weak. Yeah. I mean, you have to think like for me, oh, I've already squatted close to 210 with heels right. and this stance. Mm. So it's very, very hard to mentally make that switch. Right. Yeah. I was just yeah. about to ask that question. But we have to yeah. take a break right now because the okay, camera sure, doesn't sure. last more than 30 minutes. All right. All right okay, right, we'll right, be no right problem. back. Okay. And welcome back to Babel Junction with Iqbal. All right, Iqbal, we left off. Uh, you mentioned something about the injury and the impact that it has on your mental state. So, can you psychoanalyze that a bit for us? Oh, psycho Unpack it a bit. <laughs> what happened to you? Okay, okay, I'll do my best. So, first, like I mentioned before, injured lifters have a problem with making the change mm. so for me yeah it was i guess it was ego right like i mentioned before oh i could squat this much but i have to change how i squat and i'll only be squatting this much mm -hmm. right so you need to make that switch first because you need to think oh do i want it for short term or long term because you can try go okay let's say um you can try go back to how you were doing it but if you find that injury just creeps back up mm. that's when you need to change right right because sometimes you can go back to how you were training and maybe it might work you won't get injured mm. then that's that's cool what was the that's moment you, yeah. what was what was the moment that you decided that you needed a change okay was so there a it, particular moment yes yes so um after my rehab i was feeling much better and then like like i said i just went back to squatting with the heels with the wider mm. stance and then just like a few sessions in a few weeks later it was it was back the mm. pain was back. Okay. And I noticed, I felt like, oh, I can still keep pushing, but it's not a good idea because mm. this is the same pain I felt mm. before I got that, you know, before I got injured yep. and got set back for, for months. Mm. So, yeah, so that was the time I said, hey, you know what? I have to play around, play around my squat stance. 
maybe change my shoes. So, mm. so it was during that that time. Yeah. How long yeah. was the period between your injury and when you decided to change? Injury and when I decided to change. Okay. Um. So I said I took about five six months to yeah. build back up. That's and then mm. yeah, yeah and then after that not long after that just a few weeks after that really okay then i made the change yeah because mm. um even when i was feeling good it was still there i suppose it was it's yeah. uh, probably a, just a, a process for you because you wanted to see whether you can get back yes, yes to the same correct. training and then correct. after down the line you see that it's not the injury the pain is not going to go away then you decided to okay i think it's better to yes, yes. change right yeah and Once I made that change, also is when I started going to like a uh, physio more regularly, which I feel is important. If if you have the funds, you have the money, mm. I feel you should go see a physio, get checked up every every five six weeks. Okay, it's probably good. That's not so bad. I mean, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's not expensive if it's if you're going every once uh, once every one and a half months or two months. Yeah, yeah, correct, right? correct. Mm. I I think of it. Some people say, oh, but I I feel fine, but that's not the point, right? Mm. Um, it's Think of it as like a car maintenance. maintenance yeah. yeah, you don't wait for the your car yeah, to, to break, break down, down and then <laughs> you go fix it, right? Yeah, yeah. You need to make sure you you are going, going in like an optimal level throughout the year. Mm. Yeah. But when you when you had that injury, what went yeah. through your head, bro? Like, I'm sure it's devastating, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Because you were just squatting from 200 whatever it is yeah, it was yeah. uh, on onto uh, uh, uh and in onto a empty bar. That must have screwed up with your. Uh, I mean, mentally, okay, yeah, um, a sort of a battle in my mind, right? Mm. Because one part of me wanted to fix myself very quick and get back up, mm. but I knew that wasn't it wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to fix myself in like mm. a few weeks, you know. So basically, I was feeling I was feeling down. I think that's the best way to right. Bit depressed. Mm. I don't really know what depression actually feels like. But I just right. felt sad. Mm. Felt sad. That's mm. I think mm. felt down. That you know, oh my strength is all the hard work. Yeah. All yeah. the hard work. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, but it took time. So basically, my second year of powerlifting was just me, me getting back, mm. getting back up again. Yeah. Do you yeah. attribute that to your competitiveness or? Be, be, like you like you mentioned some people they get injured and they mm. never come back from uh, yeah, yeah, in the correct. spot right yeah so what made you different in, in that sense um i guess what made me different is that okay firstly you need to be passionate about the sport itself mm. to mm. stay in it right because there are a lot of people that uh, aren't competitive in the scene mm. but they're still lifting because they love to lift right okay mm -hmm. and some that have been injured They cannot do the weights they did before, but they're still lifting. Okay. So passion is one thing, because that will carry you throughout those uh, down moments. Because yeah. with training, you'll have up and downs. It's not always up. Yeah. But when you experience up, you know, just just take it in. Yeah. You know, enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. But just enjoy it when it lasts. Well, last yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there'll be up and down, up and down. Yeah. So firstly, passion has to be there, and then um, mindset in the sense that you need to know that okay, you know what, I need to pull back a bit before mm. I can push again and you need to know what steps you have to take and I think some people are just a bit too maybe too prideful to say they don't know what to do because mm. sometimes that's what happens you just don't know what to do right. back then when I was rehabbing also I wasn't really sure what I was doing okay we sort of just mix and match I mean I mm. don't know if what my physio gave me was, was going to fix me yeah. or what my chiro mm. was mm. going to give me was correct because The problem, like your body's a system, it's mm. not just one, right? Like I mentioned, mm -hmm. when mm. my hip, my body didn't want to put pressure on my right hip, so it went to my comes yeah. lower back. Mm. I slant a bit, and then that led to maybe some lower back discomfort here and mm. there. So what? Um, but over time, I was able to find something that that worked for me, and then from there, the progression just started coming back. How in, did you yeah. find that that right thing to do? Like how? Yeah. How did you know? To change your squats, your stance from from this to that, to from heels to flats, it's it's just experimentation. Okay. It, it's just experimentation. Yeah. No YouTube, no nothing. This <laughs> is like just no, no, no. Seriously. No. Yeah, no YouTube. Yeah. Okay. No YouTube, no nothing. So, I, I'm thinking that you're very in tune with your own body, right? Somewhat, I mean, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Because I, I think, I think um, 
lot of people don't realize that uh, they just like some somebody who gets a program from someone, mm. right? They just follow it, yeah. And sometimes they don't listen to what their body is telling them, probably, and they don't even voice out to the coach mm. and things like that. But I assume that because you manage to do it yourself, <laughs> yes, Mr. <laughs> uh, uh, you're you're very aware of your your body. Um. Maybe, maybe I never really thought too much about it, but I do know um, most people that um, have athletic backgrounds, they tend to be more in tune with their body. Mm. Like you know how some people like they they just know how to dribble a basketball mm-hmm. or throw throw a baseball, mm. while some people are just the coordination is not there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and when you ask them, oh how they, how do you know yeah. how to do that? They right. just say, oh it just this just feels natural. Yeah. So I think for some lifters, they just know what feels natural for them, mm. and it just works for them. It But just works for them, yeah. I- I'm curious, why yeah. didn't you um, seek help from from the very start? No, the, not, well, not from the very start. Mm. Uh, that's fine because I think everybody, almost everyone, starts um, discovering uh, any sport or lifting in in this, in this particular case by themselves. Yes, right. They stumble yes. upon it and then they just work on it and then they, they gradually. Learn about the sport, the lifts, and things like that. So you've been doing it for a year, a year and a half, and then mm. you got injured and, yep. what, and yep. whatnot. But and you said that you changed things by yourself, mm. without anybody telling you, "Oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing doing that." Uh, all right, of course. Um, I was given advice from the people at the gym at the time, mm. things to try, and from there, that was where the then you experimented. Yes, yes, oh, that's where okay. the experimentation came from. Yeah. Okay. Because at first, I was a bit. You saw a tunnel vision, right? Mm. I was thinking, oh, I can only squat this way, wider stance with uh, heels. But then, you know, suggestions from here, suggestions from there, and then just experiment, just experiment from there. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. Af- after you've changed your, mm. um, I'm assuming your deadlift also changed. Yes. Yes. Okay, from what narrow from convi to uh, sumo. So um, for powerlifting, I was doing sumo. Okay. So, I was doing a much wider stance sumo, so my feet were much closer to the plates. Okay. Now I cannot sumo like that because of how the angle puts mm. puts my hips at. My sumo is just narrower. Okay. Narrower, yeah, than before, yeah. Okay. Because I've had people ask me, "Oh, why don't you just go have wider. you ever tried going wider?" Yeah, because I have yeah, an injury, like, bro. Uh, I say I, I cannot. I just yeah. say my hips can't handle it. Yeah. That's what I say now. Because right. usually I don't like to use my. My injury it's as a crutch, exc- as yeah. an excuse. Mm. I mean, I just, I just say, oh yeah, my hips can't. That's, that's a good mindset. Can't, mindset, can't handle it. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah. you just keep moving forward. Yeah, just keep moving forward. Yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, after you've already uh, discovered mm. this new stance uh, or the, the way to uh, compensate for the injury, yeah. And how how did your training change? Your uh, overall okay, program? Yeah. Did your programming change? Yes, yes, of course. Did yeah, you yeah. now seek help? From other people to learn about programming, or is yes, just yes, actually, um, so I did like I mentioned before um, when I first came into powerlifting, my programming was done uh, in QLS. Yeah. After that, I sort of did my own thing. Okay, right. When I got injured, it was my own thing, but I took in those like rehab exercises from the physios, from okay. the chiros, and also advice from the people at the gym. Right. And then still doing my own thing, but uh, after I sort of got. Once I was completely like lifting more or less pain free, I was having issues with progressing further okay. because um, I changed my training in a way where basically I was just squatting and deadlifting less than I used to. Okay. So before I was injured, I was squatting like four times a week, deadlifting twice a week, and basically after I rehabbed and mm. was training injury free I was only squatting like once to twice a week okay. I was deadlifting twi- once a week as well and I didn't know how to progress so I was thinking oh um, I need to find someone to help me my bench is going fine but squat and deadlift you know mm. I don't know how to manipulate the training variables which is usually a frequency uh, volume intensity these are the three main mm-hmm. uh, variables I didn't know how to manipulate these variables to make progress, so I seek the coach. Mm. So um, the coach I got was most IPF lifters may know him. He lives in the IPF. He's not that active anymore. Uh, Canadian IPF seventy-four kilo lifter Connor Lutz. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's a uh, he's very 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 strong guy, mm. very strong guy. Seventy four. He's uh, based in Canada. Mm. So online coaching. Okay. Yeah. So he basically helped me. Um, so last year, I totaled six ten, at seventy mm. five, and it was Connor that was coaching me for close to a year. Okay, leading up no. to that yeah so he was able to structure my training in a way around my injury as well okay for me to make that that progression all right to 600 plus yeah and so. and, and you're still under him or uh, uh, recently uh no longer it's because um he has his own commitment mm-hmm. issues outside of um basically his, yeah, yeah outside of powerlifting so he's got work yeah yeah he's actually part of a uh, calgary barbell Oh, okay. As well, yeah. Like he works full time, but he's part of like he's doing on the side part of Calgary Barbell. So he has very, uh, I think, limited slots. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but mm. you've totally benefited from his uh, yes, training yes, and all definitely, that. Yes, definitely. It, it, so you, uh, from the um, the first uh, MPA, you said it was five hundred and yeah, so uh, seven. Yeah, yeah, I can, right? I can let you know. So um, first meet, so first year, five seven five, injury, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, second year, I actually was able to make a PR 595. And then um, third year, 610. Yeah. And this is my fourth year. Yeah. Macam tak lah, bro. <laughs> first, first year, 575. Then yeah. you increased 20 kg when you were injured. Yes, correct. But my strength was much more. Because what? Um, I told you 575, right? Uh-huh. And then I like... But six months after that was when I got injured, right? Right. But during that six months, my total in the gym was like 600 plus already. Okay. Yes, yes. But so when you competed, when, when did you compete for the second, for the second time? It was after the injury or before the injury? Uh, after. After, huh. yeah. Correct. So you've... So, okay, yeah, so it was in March. March, I did make space, mm. right? So I forgot what year it was, mm. but March I did make space. A few months down the road, I got injured. injured. Closer towards end of the year, uh. I wanted to do the one that was the March after. Right. I didn't because mm. I was injured. Okay. Actually, I pulled out. Yeah. Uh, people that were, were following my mm. my journey at the time know that I pulled out during mm. this time. Yeah. Okay. So March I didn't do. So I did one in was either I think it was in August, August or September. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So leading up to August September was when I was rehabbing and I sort of like slowly got myself into pain free lifting. And I just went in with, I didn't with I didn't the, have with the new stands and yes, all that. Yeah 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 yeah. From but, anti barbell. <laughs> yeah, yeah correct correct. All the way and then twenty yeah. kg PR from the year before. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Really, but yeah not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um because also like I quickly s- I switched my mindset very quickly as mm. well. That's why. But I didn't stay in that that cycle of getting injured, mm. rehab, injured, rehab, injured. This is the cycle you always see right. with everyone. Because they didn't change. They, they didn't, didn't change or yeah. they don't know how. Uh, okay, or they yeah, try yeah. changing things, but they just don't know how to, to Maybe they it. didn't find the right yeah, change. Yeah, they didn't find the right change. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, I mean, have to look at things in context as well. I think out of all the possible injuries, mine isn't super major. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, some people actually, they they dislocate or they actually break right. <laughs> break some stuff in their body, right? right? So those kind of things, I personally, I don't know how to rehab from right. that. Like mm-hmm. if someone comes to advice for me, mm. hey bro, like, you know, I, yeah, I, broke, you, I broke my knee or yeah, I broke, yeah how, yeah, how do I get back into this? I, 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 yeah. I'd be, you know what? I'm not qualified yeah. to stop, give you this stop advice. Yeah. yeah, stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so now in... Um, uh, you're in the f- your fourth year. Are you competing again this year? This year, no. I recently competed okay. in uh, Thailand, Pattaya. Last week. Uh, was it last, uh, week? last month? Last month. Yeah. Yeah, July. Actually, right. I did very bad. Oh, I did come? very bad. Why? Actually, uh, it's my worst, not worst performance, but it was a a step back from last year's performance. This was more. Um, I had some issues with my back leading up to training and then the heat over there killed me the meat oh, was outdoors yeah oh okay. yeah yeah i wasn't used to it 
Why would they do it outdoors? I train in AC, you know. Yeah. Well, I I'm office boy also in AC, you know. So <laughs> I, I go out, I go into the sun. I just I just died. Yeah, yeah. You just melted, ah. I just melted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's no excuse because what everyone else was under the same conditions. Right. It's just that my body just shuts just down. Didn't, uh, just yeah. shut down. Yeah. Mm. By the time deadlift came around, I had no no energy. Yeah. So basically, obviously, because yeah. yeah. Mm. So five seven five, five nine five. Six ten, and this is my fourth year. Uh, five nine five again. Okay. Yeah. So basically, a step back. Yeah. But, but my five, training was going very well. But five nine five in. He, uh, in <laughs> in heat. No, I don't. I don't say in heat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> in hot conditions. In so. hot conditions. Yeah. <laughs> my my first time uh, doing something overseas as well. So it was uh, good experience. Very good experience. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you are sticking to, uh, GPA lah. For the time being, yes, I don't see myself uh, switching anytime soon. Okay. I mean, if I do IPF, maybe I'll do it as a weight class heavier. Mm. Just have to have to see, yeah. Because I don't know if I want to cut right with a two-hour weigh-in and then it's one kilo below as well. GPA is seventy-five, but for IPF, it's a uh, seventy-four. Seventy-four. Yeah. Man. I, yeah. Uh, so, any competition for this year? For this year, no, but I'm planning to do one next year. I always do at least once. At least one. At least once a year, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Any chance you're probably gonna go overseas again or just local? Un undecided, undecided. But maybe I'm thinking local, because just save the time. But I don't want to say, you mm. know. I yeah. Don't know. Mm. Maybe I'm in the mood to go overseas. Then yeah. maybe go overseas and. When. Uh, totally unrelated to yeah, your yeah. injury or whatever. Yeah, when okay, you sure, went sure. to um, uh, Thailand, oh yeah, how was the competition? How was the competition actually? How's the level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm asking. Yeah. There were a lot of strong lifters that were supposed to compete there, like their own local mm. Thailand Thai lifters. Mm. But for some reason, a lot of them pulled out. I don't know why. Because of the heat. Maybe code. they they, <laughs> they felt the heat. They're like, so okay, man. Tak ada bumbung. Because actually it was um, it was just basically Malaysian lifters in the 75. Uh huh. Yeah. How many athletes lot, were there? Basically, um, actually the top three. Uh huh. So the first place in 75 was um by uh, Chia. Mm -hmm. Think you know Chia. He's he trains in uh, uh V Fitness. Okay. Seremban. Oh Seremban. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So Chia took first. I took second, and then uh, another Malaysian lifter, uh, Andrew. He mm. took third. So one, two, three was from uh, Malaysian lifters. And then there was some Viet lifters as well, some Thai lifters. But like the participant list went from like, there were like 15 to 20, 75 kilo lifters. And then it just like cut in half. I, I, and I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Cause Is it big after they announced the venue or? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because we didn't know. We, we all were just, ah, you know what, let's. Yeah. Let's try something for fun overseas. A lot, right. a lot of us as a group just sort of went mm. to have some fun. You know, can double because we go to Pattaya, so it doubles as a vacation. A bit okay, like a small mm. vacation. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. yeah. So what are you up to nowadays? What am I up to nowadays? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now it's considered your off yeah, yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? my off season. Uh -huh. So um, I'm trying to put on put on a bit of weight. My body weight's at 77. I'm gonna bring it up to 80 kilos to see how my strength mm. is at at 80 so basically just training and then working you know work Chup. train yeah you say you just you, you want to go a weight class uh, above right yeah hopefully Kay. yeah that's the plan yeah i'm assuming you're just eating more yes right yes how does your strength increase then because you're just gaining weight i'm assuming not with muscles right mm. well um Firstly, you have to look at how fast you gain that weight. Mm -hmm. If you're gaining like a lot of weight very quickly, I'm I'm saying like let's say I go from now 77 to like 82 within like a month. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then yeah, you're probably putting on a lot of fat. Okay. So you have to adjust your training as well. So I'm doing I'm really pushing the volume on my training. Okay. Yeah. And that in terms of the assistance exercises, yeah. So. And I bump my calories up and then just see how my body will respond. Okay. Yeah. And how long is that process? Do you, do you have a timeline like you need to hit 
eighty two or eighty whatever mm-hmm. it is by a certain time before um, the competition yeah. or how does it work? For me, I'm hoping by by end of this year to be sitting around comfortably around eighty kilos. Okay. So basically, what I do is my calories, right? I just be in a bit of a surplus, three hundred, five hundred calories above what my maintenance is, mm-hmm. and then see from month to month how my weight gain is. Wow, cool. yeah, so scientific. Yeah. Yeah, And as a I chemist, don't. you probably <laughs> <laughs> can cook up something, right? <laughs> uh, no, no. I actually, I'm, I'm not that precise. Actually, I'm very mm. eyeball kind of uh, guy. Because yeah, yeah. um, when actually when, because my metabolism is quite fast. Mm. I'd say, I'd say, uh, in my right. opinion, it's, mm. it's quite fast. Mm. I can eat fast food every day if I want, mm. and then have my regular food. But which you don't, that, right? Have what? No, no, no. Which you don't, right? No, not all the time. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. not all the time. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> then have 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 bubble tea as well. Yeah. You know, have monster drinks, mm. and my weight stays around seventy seven. Okay. But it's not every day, so I just need to make sure that every day I'm sort of eating a bit more. Mm. A bit more, yeah. And recently, you started your co- your own coaching. Yes, yes. This year, yeah. So yeah. basically, that's what I'm up to as well. Yeah. Hopefully, to partly, of course, um, coaching is to help other people, but also as a way for us to to make some money. Mm. Well, let's be honest, right? When we start, yeah. I know a lot of people don't want to say it. Mm. They want to say, "Oh, I'm doing this just for the community. I'm doing this just." Yeah. But for me, for me, right? Right. It's not mutually exclusive. Like you can help the community and you can make money at the right. same time, right? It's not. It's not like you have to choose, yeah. choose uh, one over the other. One over the other, yeah. And I think yeah. that's that's a very yeah. good um, topic to mm. speak about, mm. uh, which we won't do today. I think that's a separate topic, right? Yes, of course. Because of course, I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. um, when I spoke with uh, Nick, who went to IPF Worlds, mm. right? I think it was Nick. I can't remember who I, I, exactly. And when I asked them whether there's a prize money at IPF Worlds, yeah. there's no money. Yeah, correct. It's correct. just a medal, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking like how how do you expect the sport to grow mm. when there's no money for the lifters? They've spent yep. a lot of uh, money on training, on diet, uh, equipment, and things like that. But at the end of it, is it just for personal glory? Uh, I, I find it a bit yeah something's yeah. missing, lah. Correct. That's why right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why also with powerlifting, right? With all the injuries and stuff. Um, A lot for me, at least, to tie in with my coaching, right? Mm. Obviously, I want to help you get stronger, but I like to educate um, basically my my athletes or my clients mm. to tell them what are you training for, actually, you know? Because mm. some, if you know what you're training for, then it makes things a bit easier. But some people really don't know why they're training. Mm. Like, why why get injured for nothing, uh. really? Right, because um, actually, okay, at the time when I totaled right five seven five, I was the national record holder. Oh, for seventy five kilo, yeah. But see, you you don't know. I no do, one knows. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, because it, it really yeah. it doesn't matter, right? Right. Um, unless you're really at the top elite level where you're making money from Sponsorship. sponsorships, yeah. mm. people are flying for you to compete. Yeah, you give know, talks. Then, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, give mm. talks. Blah blah blah. You know, you have your own supplement line. Maybe mm. there's all these things. You're making money. From the sport, right? Mm. Then maybe you know how you approach training can be a bit more aggressive mm. because that's your living, right? Yep. But for most of us, we're just you're either a regular working person, you're just a student. Yep. Of course, you want to get stronger. I'm mm. not saying what don't aim high. Mm. But I'm saying, you know, be be realistic as well. Find well, the re- yeah. uh, resin the track. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. But like, what, can I ask you? Yeah, sure. Uh, lastly, yeah, uh, what is your reason for? Powerlifting. What's my reason? Yeah, I I enjoy. Firstly, I enjoy training. Uh, like from my background, as we mentioned before, yeah. I've always been in some form of sports. Right. So, firstly, keep keeping active is good for me. Yep. I just need something to do. Firstly, mm. and then also I like competition. Mm-hmm. If you grew up in sports, you like competition. I like competing against other people. That's cool. Okay. If I can mm. beat someone, it's like yeah, I, yeah. I beat that guy, right? Right. But if I lose. It's okay, all right. Yeah, just I lost, cry, but cry for the night. And then cry for the <laughs> night, and then back. you know, and then come back. Okay, what yeah. what can I do to to win next time, right? Yeah. yeah. So there's that competition which I like as well. Yeah. And then third is, I've just sort of like fallen into this 
mm. this track not maybe not really a track um when you get a bit of a taste mm. you want to go to the next step yep right you want to keep oh. on keep you know, on going yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. and i enjoy it and you know like with my coaching as well and stuff I, at least i can make something out of it yeah. uh monetarily as well right, right? right yeah yeah so so yeah yeah that's that's why and i just i just i just enjoy it that's cool i bro. just enjoy it yeah that's, that's all i can say yeah. yeah yeah anyway um that's all the time we have for, no problem, for this no episode problem. uh thank you again iqbal for sharing your experience your in your, your, in your injury and whatnot any last things that you want to tell your your fans or my our fans listeners oh, yeah. oh, I, don't, I don't know you yeah. call them where fans can, where, yeah, where can yeah, they find you yeah, yeah. you know yeah so um i mean most of you already know my i have a quite active on instagram so anything just give me a follow or hit me a dm if, right. if you want to ask yeah, anything where, yeah where in instagram like where uh, in instagram yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> username is uh, iqbal underscore ikram okay so it's basically it's just my name yeah right but you have the coaching yeah. page as well right yes yes yeah. yeah but um to go through the coaching i mean my coaching is titled under the sisyphian protocol mm-hmm. but explaining that will take a whole another topic so yeah. so we won't touch on yeah, that but i have a coaching page as well right it links from my main profile as well okay so i'll, I'll put it down up. on the link uh, so yeah. that everyone can, can thank you find thank you. you thank you yeah so okay yeah. again iqbal thank you so much for coming And uh, that's all we have for this week. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. All right, all right. Ciao. Cool, bro. Okay. Short and sweet.